Throughout the decades, Resident Evil has amassed a large ensemble of characters, each with their own expanding story. But if there's any one of these characters that comes closest to being the main protagonist, a very strong argument can be made that it's Chris Redfield, appearing in the most games of any characters and being on the cover of the first game. At least I think that's supposed to be him. What's up with that face? It's always bothered me. Actually, wait, it appears that there's actually a theory that this isn't Chris Redfield, but Richard Aiken. But that makes no sense. Like, the entire time he spends in the game is laying on the ground dying from poison. Ouch! And then in the DS version, there's that weird little clock puzzle where he gives you the clue, and it's very obviously a completely different voice actor switched in. Here's my radio. Set the dying room clock to 8-12. Oh wait, actually, according to the artist who made the cover art, it's neither Chris nor Richard, just some guy he made up. Point still stands, Chris is the closest thing there is to Resident Evil having a character that's the face of the series. Even making a comeback in Resident Evil 8 looking like a boondock saint. But like many of the other actors in the game, Chris Redfield's live action performer went unknown for a very long time, being credited only as Charlie. Who was Charlie, and for that matter, who was the voice actor behind the character? Find out in this episode of Gaming Mysteries. This video is sponsored by Raycon. Since I've got them, I've used my wireless Raycon earbuds almost every single day when I go for a walk. They sound great, fit comfortably, and stay connected to my phone the whole time. And if you don't trust me, maybe you'll trust... Melissa Etheridge. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium earbuds on the market. And they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Their latest model, the Everyday E25, is their best one yet with 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. It also comes in fun new colors. Just go to buyraycon.com slash wang to get 15% off your order. Alright, I know that all you guys are waiting for the new Jill Valentine episode. I know it was big news that her actress Inez got found. And the story behind the discovery was pretty interesting, however, as of now, Dr. Raichi and Fred Durf, Predator fanboy who runs the Raccoon Stars blog, who have made contact with most of the other actors in the past, have sent her some interview questions. I really want to wait to see what she says in that interview before I make the update video, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I thought it would be interesting to talk about some of the other actors from that game who I haven't spoken about yet, first of which being Chris Redfield. Let's start with the mysterious live-action sequence actor, Charlie, who spent his time on camera serving up confused, disgusted faces and lighting a cigarette with that famous lighter he would eventually gift to his sister Claire. The story of Charlie's discovery is a bit different from the other actors. Charlie became aware that he was in Resident Evil when a friend of his who was a gamer came across footage of him in Resident Evil on YouTube. The friend sent the footage over and it brought back fond memories of this shoot that Charlie hadn't seen since. A few months later in October, Charlie, full name Charlie Kreslavsky, spoke to Fred from the Raccoon Stars blog. In the interview, he explains that he lost track of the project much like the other actors in the game. It was very difficult to get production companies to make a VHS copy and mail it to you. It's not like today, where they can just email you a link. He goes on to describe how he got the job. At the time, he was represented by a Japanese agency called the Inagawa Motoko Office, which specialized in providing foreign talent for Japanese productions. It sounds similar to the agency that was mentioned by Linda, the actress for Rebecca, although she didn't recall the name. And speaking of the other actors, Charlie didn't work with most of them again, however, he mentioned that he often worked with Eric Pierius, who portrayed Albert Wesker. What this means is that there are several Japanese productions from the mid-90s that have nothing to do with Resident Evil, yet contain both Chris Redfield and Albert Wesker. When speaking of Eric, he mentions that he often saw him riding his bike recklessly around Tokyo, often running red lights to the point where he was concerned for his safety. And funny enough, Eric, in an interview with the channel J-Dub's Video Nasties, alludes to his love of cycling. It's actually a pretty interesting interview, so I'll link that in the description. And while I'm talking about Wesker, here's a fun tidbit that I noticed. If you remember from my video about Rebecca, there was a theory for a while that she was one of the voice actors in the game Deep Freeze. As it turns out, Eric Pierius, Albert Wesker, actually did perform one of the voices in that game. 
credited as Eric Scott, a pseudonym that he often used. Going back to Fred's interview with Charlie, it gave us some funny insight into just how much the concept of Chris Redfield changed since the original game. I remember seeing the sketches of the characters at the audition, and how cool the costumes looked. They asked me permission to dye my hair, which is naturally very dark brown, almost black. And they also asked me to grow some stubble. I remember the stylist having a very strong opinion that the character would never grow stubble, that he would be very disciplined about shaving, while the director felt very strongly that I would have stubble because we would be on the mission for several days. When they dyed my hair, they used straight peroxide, which turned my hair almost a red color. That red hair with my almost black beard stubble looked ridiculous, so they decided the character would be clean shaven. Back in those days, they probably also would have never imagined that Chris would ever be punching boulders. He also speaks of that opening sequence, the one where Chris is running down the hallway before ultimately some monster gets him. At the end of the sequence, the director wanted Chris to open his eyes really big for that title screen shot. An iconic motif that's since been repeated several times throughout the series. But he just couldn't get his eyes big enough for the director's liking, so he came up with a pretty funny solution. The very last frame of the video is a close-up of my eye, just before the creature kills me. We shot this in one of the hallways at the abandoned warehouse. I remember the director saying, When the camera comes right up to your face, open your eye as big as you can in terror. I did as he asked, but my eyes are kind of small to begin with, and it did not look big enough for him. So we tried it again, and he told me to wait till the camera got close in, and then use my fingers to open my eye even bigger. I remember at the time thinking that surely they will see my fingers in the shot, but it looks like it worked okay in the end. And if you're curious about other work that Charlie's been in, he actually has a YouTube channel with some clips of projects he's been in. And, uh, I'll link the channel in the description along with the full interview that Raccoon Stars did. As for the voice actor behind Chris, he was performed by Scott McCulloch, who often went by the name Ramsey Scott and is not to be confused with the other actor Scott McCulloch, who often has his credits mixed up with Ramsey's. Scott, who also worked as a radio DJ, was like a lot of other video game voice actors in that he was very prolific and had a lot of roles that you might have heard before. Like Paul Phoenix. Guess that's a bit of foreshadowing. The narrator from Castlevania 64. Reinhard Schneider, heir to the ancient Belmont clan of vampire hunters. Oh, and while we're talking about Castlevania, probably one of the most iconic lines in the series history. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! It's so weird how you can play Symphony of the Night a million times and play Resident Evil a million times and never put together that these are the same voice actor, but once you know it, it's so obvious. Die, monster! You say this failure is your savior? Scott's last role would be in Shenmue where he would simply provide some various NPC voices. Unfortunately, in September of 2000, Scott passed away in a traffic accident. In an interview with the Resident Evil database, Barry Jurdy, who did the voice of Barry Burton, spoke of Scott's passing. Unfortunately, Scott passed away on 24th September of 2000. I've heard that some Resident Evil fans say this is not true, that he didn't die, but it is true. I went to his funeral wake, and I saw Scott lying there before me in an open casket. I also met his widow and their young daughter. This had a great impact on me. Having traveled to India, I had seen dead bodies before in Varanasi, also one time in Taiwan. A young man lying on a street killed by a truck, but never had I seen a friend deceased in a coffin. Scott's funeral week was Friday, 29th September of 2000. I will never forget it. Many members of Tokyo's foreign voice talent community came to pay their respects. He was well known due to his radio show on Inter FM at the time, a mostly English language radio station in Tokyo. Scott's mother and sister were also there from Canada. Who knows how many classic lines he would have given us throughout the years, but one thing's for sure, the work he did do will never be forgotten. And anyway, that's the story of the actors behind the original Chris Redfield. For now, follow Dr. Raichi and Predator Fanboy on Twitter as they'll be the first ones to know when Jill Valentine responds with the interview questions. 
And if you like this video, be sure to check out my video about Harry Mason's voice actor from Silent Hill, who turned out to be the other half of that famous interaction from Symphony of the Night. I'm out. <laughs>